The Mercedes W14 has finally been revealed, and the team hopes that it can keep up this time around. Last year was, for lack of a better term, a learning experience for the Silver Arrows with how poorly they performed against Red Bull and Ferrari. Last year's car struggled to perform adequately in straights with its unusual bouncing, costing them quite a few points as a result. Will Mercedes go back to their winning ways, and will Lewis Hamilton still be spearheading the charge in the years to come? Let's find out. Mercedes is setting their sights on the F1 championship with the debut of their new F1 W14. The team hopes to build on the few successes of last year's W13 by maintaining its exceptional high-speed downforce while addressing the issues of bouncing that plagued the previous model. Despite these improvements, the W14 retains many of the distinctive details that made its predecessor unique, including the slim vertical inlets for the radiators, extensive exposed floor, and employment of the exposed upper cis bar to direct airflow downward. The lower side pod contours on the W14 have been reshaped to improve aerodynamics. Specifically, the contours have been smoothed out and widened towards the front, with elongation towards the back. The side pods now feature a high cooling cannon that separates them from the engine cover, expelling air from the radiators at the back on either side of the exhaust. As a result, there is now less of a need for large cooling louves on the side pod tops. But despite these changes, Technical Director Mike Elliott didn't sound too confident in the W14. When asked if porpoising would still be an issue this year, this was his response. The easy answer is, I hope not. I think when you look at the sort of the learning we took from last year, you look at the tools that we put together, hopefully. We've got all the right metrics in place to understand what we need to do to the car so it doesn't bounce, but fingers crossed. Elliot also gave us some insight into the team's process of redesigning the car, saying that it is better to build on what they have rather than start from scratch. Last year, there were times when we were questioning ourselves and asking have we made a major mistake? Do we need to change what we are fundamentally doing? But you know, if you tear it all up and start again, you're going to start further back than where you are. It's better to take the car you've got and build on it. Although we've had a lot of problems with the car last year, there was also a lot of goodness in the car. There were things it did well. You have to be careful not to throw those things away by starting again. Team boss Toto Wolf echoed his sentiments. We have analyzed it back and forth, and as you can see, the side pods are still very different to any other car. We believe this is not a performance relative part. Obviously, there is no such thing as a holy cow. We are looking at everything. These are the first iteration of the side pods, and after a few races, they will probably change a little. But as Mike says, you can end up going three steps backwards to take two forwards. I love the fact that we stayed bold and continued to follow what the science says for us. Although the car's launch did not showcase the new rear suspension system, it was tested at Silverstone shortly thereafter. The primary goal of the redesign was to provide the car with a greater range of suspension travel, which would allow for less rigid settings to stabilize the aerodynamic platform. This in turn should address the bouncing issue that previously plagued the car. It remains to be seen if this new design will propel Mercedes to the top of the podium, but the team is certainly making a bold statement with the W14's debut. And as for their drivers, the battle for free speech against the FIA rages on. George Russell is admitted to being somewhat confused by the new rule, saying that the reason behind the decision wasn't exactly made clear. He also added that he is against silencing F1 drivers. We are not going to limit our views or thoughts because of some silly regulation. We are all here to have free speech and share whatever views we have. Russell also hopes that the FIA will provide them with much needed clarification before the season officially starts, and he believes that by then, it wouldn't be so much of a talking point. I hope and trust it will be resolved before the first race. I can't imagine they want to restrict us from many of our views. This is a part of freedom of speech, and we have our right to share our views across whatever platform we wish. So I don't see this being a concern moving forward. Lewis, on the other hand, took a more confrontational approach. Despite the governing body of Formula One's ban on political statements by drivers, he made it clear that he would not be deterred from speaking out. Hamilton stated that he would not remain silent, and even suggested that he would continue to do so regardless of any sporting penalties he might face. The launch of Mercedes' new W14 car at Silverstone provided an opportunity for the seven-time F1 champion to make his views known. Despite expectations, the driver's stance dealt a significant blow to the FIA's efforts to regulate drivers' public statements given his status as one of the sport's most prominent figures. 
In his first statement addressing the rule, Lewis told reporters that, Nothing will stop me from speaking on the things I am passionate about and the issues that there are. I feel the sport does have a responsibility still, always to speak out on things, to create awareness on important topics, particularly as we are traveling to all these different places, so nothing changes for me. The consequences of his actions were not lost on Hamilton, who recognized that his defiance of the ban on political statements could result in penalties, including the deduction of points during the upcoming season. Although he acknowledged that such penalties would not be ideal, he considered them a potentially worthwhile price to pay for making his views known. It would be silly to say I would want to get penalty points for speaking out on things, but I am still going to be speaking my mind. We still have this platform. There are still a lot of things we need to tackle. The support of Stefano has been amazing, and all the drivers have been very much aligned on freedom of speech. The FIA has been rather vague about the specific limitations the drivers will face under the new regulation. While they promised to provide clarification soon, there has been no detailed explanation forthcoming. The situation has been complicated by the fact that drivers seem to be in strong agreement that they will not accept any constraints on their right to express themselves. The FIA may face a significant challenge in attempting to enforce the new regulation in face of such united opposition. In other Mercedes news, Lewis Hamilton's contract extension is seemingly all but final. In a press conference following the launch of their new W14 car at Silverstone, Total Wolf announced that the team had begun talks with Lewis regarding a contract extension. Notably, Wolf indicated that Hamilton's age would not be a determining factor in the negotiations, and that both parties were taking their time in reaching an agreement. Hamilton's current contract is set to expire at the end of 2023. We've had a first chat but I don't want to commit to any timeline because it's not important for him, nor for us. It runs a full year and we're going to find the right time. I think the age, 38, plays no role in this next contract if you look at how well top athletes in the world have pushed the boundaries. Toto added that they have never had any major issues when it came to discussing contract extensions with Hamilton. In terms of the contractual situation, we've always found good solutions that reflect his value for the team and for the sport, and on the other side, I think Mercedes is the place he wants to be. These things have never been a contentious point. Nothing's dragging on, the alignment is great. It's almost not like a first priority sitting down because this is going to be a journey that will continue. What are your thoughts on the W14? Do you think Mercedes made enough changes to result in podiums this coming season? Will the FIA's rule against free speech deter Hamilton from coming back to Formula 1? Let's discuss it down in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for the latest F1 updates.